So thank you very much for coming on mm -hmm. October Red Interviews. I'm Abs. I'm joined by Richard Davis, the son of Mr. Don Davis, um, who we've spoken to earlier. Um, wow, Richard, your dad. What an absolute yeah. diamond. What an absolute golden yeah. nugget in the sport of boxing. Nug I'm kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of embarrassed that I never knew much about him until mm. uh, today. Um, until, well, until obviously I started to research, but obviously speaking to him um, today. Everyone yeah. seems to know who he is. Um, <laughs> the fighters the boxing, that he's trained. boxing fan. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the yeah. real boxing. I'm on the casual, I'm back on the casual bench now because I clearly know nothing. <laughs> But talk to me a little bit about your boxing uh, uh, career because you, your dad's touched on him not wanting you to box and yeah. lo and behold, you get involved. Talk to us yeah. about that. Well, I didn't, well, I was at the uh, Miguel's Boxing Club. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, it, it's, a, it, it's always been in the blood. But, you know, we come from a, a background of where we were told what we had to do, you know, dad and mom wanted us to educate ourselves. Um, and that's a traditional Caribbean thing. You know, you go, have ambition. you go to school, you learn. You yes. Do you must have ambition. ambition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's, that's that what it was. That was the key word in our so, Yeah. Yeah. But what dad didn't realise was that all those years he's been taken to me since I was three years old, mm. three years old to the, to the Thomas Beckett. Oh, I was okay. digesting a lot of stuff, you know. I saw some great fighters, Maurice Holt, yeah. you know, uh, Dennis Andrews, Errol Christie. Um, th th you know, there was Lasselle. Do you remember Lasselle? Yeah. Oh, there was, I, I, I could, there's so many fighters that passed up at that Beckett. And I was the only boy, the only boy that was there. I used to sit on this little wooden cupboard um, yeah. and sit and watch uh, all these great, phenomenal boxers came through not even from the UK from uh, the world of boxing in America you know it was fantastic so um, and in those days there was only two bags and a ring right yeah. two bags and one ring and that was everybody had their slots um, uh, to, to, to actually participate and do their training and, and, and watching the sparring was phenomenal you know some great talented you know, the sparring is so much different than what it was, what it is now. You know, the sparring then, it had rhythm. It was sophisticated. It was technical. Um, it was like two ballerinas in the ring, just just picking out each other. It was just, it was beautiful to watch. The sparring now, I'm sorry to say, it, yeah, it's lost all of that. You know, it's flawed. It's, it's just you know, there's no movement within the ring now. Uh, everybody stays in the centre of, you know, if you watch fights now, hardly anybody's moving. They're all staying in the centre of the ring. Everybody, you know, they say, don't stay in the corner. You know, stay those days, ropes. boxers could move in the corner. You know, yeah, the rope a dope. You know, that, that, that expression that they use. So, you know, I watched all of that from when I was young and I digested so much. I didn't even realise I was digesting it. That's the thing. Um, it was only later on when I started to go to the, the Miguel's Boxing Club and I've got a feel and a taste. Oh, you, you froze again. obviously my dad. Oh, did I freeze? Yeah. Am I there? Yeah, you okay. said that you went to Miguel's and oh. that's when you got the taste. Yeah, no, it was even before Miguel's, wasn't it? Yeah, the gym of copper, um, under the bridge. Under the bridge, yeah, what was it called? Um, Heartbreak Hotel, Heartbreak Hotel on uh, Peckham High Street, yeah. a big factory it was, and um, I remember it, it was a huge factory, it had so much potential. Um, he opened it up and I, I remember some, some really brilliant uh, fighters coming in there. I used to spar with Isaac Chuckle, was it Chuckle? Yeah. Isaac? Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I think... Uh, he, he he was going to do really well. 
um, and unfortunately didn't do as well as we expected. I used to spar with Ted, Ted Bami. Yeah. Uh, I, really, I really used to have some great sparring sessions. Okay. Um, very technical, very fast, very aggressive. And I always used to have to think on my feet when I was sparring with him. I moved, you know, and I didn't want to stay there. Uh, I, you know, I had to think. Dad showed me certain ways that, you know, if the guy's coming forward, you, you, sometimes you got to defend, but take the step back and then throw the shot. Okay. So it, so he's going to get hit on the way up, you know, on the way in, should I say. Yeah. So there was loads of little things that, you know, was really good. And then I, I boxed in the novice championships and um, I boxed against the army, which was a fantastic experience because um, there was, it was really funny because when you box against the army, they're all kitted out everybody's kitted out from the bags, they have kept their bags, their clothes, they all had the same thing on it. There's a few of us boys who rag a muffin dressed in how we want to dress, uh, you know, and we go to this show and you can't tell who you were going to fight. So there was, must have been about 24 fighters on the night. You couldn't tell which fighter you were going to fight. And, um, I just was like, "Whoa, this is this is the, this is the, it's the waiting that gets to me." Yeah, I want to get in there now. I don't. I didn't want to wait. You know, two, three hours. You're waiting to get on the fight, and you're thinking, "Oh my god," you know. And uh, everybody was winning, so I knew I couldn't lose. <laughs> I knew there was no that way pressure. I was going to be the one that in that team. Yeah, it was lots of pressure, and I, I stopped my guy in the second round. So Ooh. it was really good. But um, I decided from way back that I think by the time I finished the amateurs, I was 40, innit? Mm. Yeah, I was 40. No way. So I couldn't make that decision to turn. I didn't have enough fights to turn pro, put it that way. Um, and I, I, I like the amateur scene. Yeah. But um, at the weight as well, it, at my weight, 60 what was I 69 64 I was uh, it was very hard to get a lot of uh fights at that at that weight maybe at the heavier weights you get a few more people but I was light very light and it was up to the trainers to get me the fights so I just decided you know what let's become a coach at 40 I can just switch and um you know get some good fighters in and um go from there sort of thing and that's where the training has developed over the last uh, what now? F seven years. So pulling it back, then what? You were you you know your dad said that you were you started boxing when you were fifteen. When did you actually go amateur? How old were you? I went amateur. Yeah, I went uh, thirteen. I think fourteen. At Queens Road. At Queens Road. Yeah, yeah. At Queens Road. Yeah. I I was amateur for a long time, but um. Right trying to get fights was really hard right is that what helped you make the decision not there. to turn pro did that influence your decision uh, no i just felt that yeah yeah i didn't have the experience that i wanted yeah i didn't have the experience and nowadays you know fighters now they don't even want to turn pro they just want to box um uh, they don't want to turn amateur they just want to box mm -hmm. so they're turning pro far too quick and i think you need to have a basic pro amateur career mm -hmm. in order to move to the pro settings. I al I've always said that, you know, um, but for me, yeah, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. So when did it click to you? You was like, okay, I'm not the, the pro game. Okay. I'm not going to do this. But once again, you're following in your father's footsteps, like to do the training. You said you were 40 yeah. and then you made that decision. Okay. I know the sport I've been in it since well three years old um and you said yeah. okay let, let's start training what what flipped the switch for you to say okay not pro let's be a trainer let's be a coach okay so um what happened was i got a call i was at miguel's training fighters anyway um in the amateurs um i didn't even have my amateur license yet and then i got a call one day from uh lorraine pastor lorraine jones who uh, son died, the late Dwayne Simpson, he died of a stabbing. And so she knew um, that I was doing boxing 
at, Miguel, at the Miguel's Boxing Club. And she asked me whether or not I would do any community work, which I'm not going to say no to that because that's something close to, I think, everybody's heart, right? Building these young female and, and male uh, people together so that they can do something with their lives. So I accepted the post and um, it was a really, really learning curve for me in how to develop fighters quickly. Within the first two to three years, we didn't have any competitions. We just trained, I just trained them and trained them and trained them. And then I said to her, I'm going to uh, actually now affiliate the club. Um, so I spoke to the girls and I said, look, I'm going to affiliate my own club now and, um, and, and develop amateur boxers from there. And that's when it all started. Um, and we had something like the first 60 fights and we only lost like four in our first season. I had a middleweight that just tore up the division, the 75 kg that tore up the division. And then um, we decided the year before last, went to the MTK Box Cup, which is a brilliant box cup to go for the amateurs. I think it's just brilliant to, for the experiences and the travel so that they get the real life experience of how the pros would really develop. And we won uh, a gold medal at that, at that one. And then I decided that I wanted to bring all of the boys to the MTK Box Cup this time to challenge for every single title there was in every different way. And um, COVID happened, so we couldn't go. Um, so after that now, um, I wanted to follow my dad's legacy. I think it was really important for people to know who he is, what he's been doing over the years. He's, he's had some great fighters, British champions, European champions, world champions. But no one don't know about him, which is ridiculous. That part. Um, so I decided to um, to leave Dwayne Amix so that I could follow my my father's legacy and create the Don Davis Boxing Academy um, and keep his history of how his style of boxing is because his style is a very difficult style to learn. Really? Um, and you do need patience. Talk to me yeah, about that. You Talk do to need me about patience. his style. Well, dad doesn't like to move much. I do. <laughs> dad is a, is, is a master at defense, master technician at defense. He can stay in the pocket and not get hit. And, and the movement within that defense is the fight will be dazzled. They'd be lost. And that's why he's good at what he does. He can set up a, a, a pro boxer from the beginning, set him straight. And, and once he's set straight, he can climb all the way up the ladder once you set yourself straight but it is a difficult uh thing to learn that movement inside and to, to know how to when the person's throwing a jab know how to defend from a jab and give the jab back yeah there's things there like what you would do when the fighter's jabbing you jab with him it messes up his emotions it messes it messes up his, his his feelings he ain't expecting that jab to come back you know um, at like the same time he's throwing it almost so, like a mirror you know, you, the timing hmm? like, like a mirror yes yes absolutely absolutely it confuses the boxers and we do it at the amateur gym we try and get them to throw the jab with the jab because what's happening now these days is that that guy's throwing the jab then he waits for it to come up then he throws the jab Counter. then that one throws the jab then he it's yeah it's more countering but what we're doing is we're trying to break them down and destroy that jab so he has less confidence in throwing it himself because he knows he's going to get it straight back so that was one of the things uh we, mm. we, we looked at the other thing was the body shots we've always learned about body shots um with inside the range of 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 a fighter there's a sequence that dad uses i know it by heart and it's the uppercut left foot right cross when you're inside with that fighter you have to throw that sequence. They don't throw it enough here. Yeah. yeah. I'm when just, you get, I'm just when you get back it. into sparring. <laughs> ah, it's a beautiful sequence to throw. And then with that, you can even take the step back if you want. And then throw this much combinations. Um, you can you can you can uh, learn, you know. And then so offer of that now, uh, 
late, was it two years now, three years ago, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard came to London and I met him in London um, and we had a great talk, um, signed autographs and stuff like that because he was one of my, I wanted to box like him from when I was young, when I used to watch him, you know, the dazzling style, hit and not to be hit, that sort of movement, uh, flick your head out and make them miss, brilliant, absolutely fabulous. Um, and it was really funny because um, I was talking to a couple of old trainers a few weeks ago and we was talking about um, Norman and Raymond Collins. They were twins. And I can tell you now, there was nothing like them. And even if they were to, to this day, as amateur boys, they didn't even turn pro. They were van pound for pound, one of the best boxers in the UK. Norman and Raymond Collins. The twins, they were um, Peck ABC at the time. Do you remember them? Oh my God. If you saw those two boys box, you would have thought they would have came out of Sugar Ray Leonard's blood. It was just fabulous. Until this day, there's never been, I haven't seen not one amateur fighter do dominate like them. But they were fantastic. For whatever reasons, they didn't turn pro. Mm -hmm. um, but they were amazing. And I remember sparring with them sometimes and I was like, oh my God, they're too fast. They were too quick. Their movement was exactly just dynamite. And, um, you know, um, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. You know, so now we're at this stage now, COVID is finished. Um, Don Davis Academy is lit. It's lit. It's absolutely going crazy at the moment. I'll bet boxes it is. from all over. Um, yeah. We've got a couple of pros that's uh, uh, new pros that are coming in as well. And we're building this great team. Um, but the good thing as well, as you know, we're networking with the coaches that we're around at the moment. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm loving uh, talking to them, listening to them about their experiences. And collectively, we can be powerful if we just stay together and just keep, keep the meal running, you know. And we can do this. I know we can do this. That's why... You know, dad's there, you know, at the end of the day, he can look and he, he can he can spot a talent from a mile away. Yeah. You know, he can see somebody and say, right, you know what, yeah, that one's going to be good, you know. Um, I remember one guy, though, that I sparred with, he was a pro guy, Italian. Was he Italian or Moroccan? Yeah. Moroccan. Moroccan. Dad trained this guy, and I tell you what, his movement, I couldn't pick it. I couldn't. His movement was just... He'd throw punches from all different directions. You don't even know where, <laughs> whether he's coming or going. And then he'd be off, you know. That's all. Um, and that, yeah. So I know that's, you know, dad's skills were, you know, when they listen, the foundation of boxing, they can get it. And once they get it, it, it makes their boxing more easy, you know. But nowadays, as dad said, all these dazzling pad work, um, they, they, the, the boxers are telling the trainers, how they want to fight, and that's not the way it should be. Mm. Yeah. That, that makes me yeah. very We hear nervous. it all the time. Yeah. That, yeah. that makes me really, yeah. really nervous. So, you, you've got a trainer yeah, for it's, a reason. It's, it's, They're it's, like the third eye, aren't they? They're the ones that can see what you can't. Absolutely. So, you, ha you, you know, you've got two of these absolutely. and one of these for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you must have a game plan when you go into a fight. I think sometimes... You, might, you must have an A, a B, and a C plan. If one plan don't work, the second one must work, and the second one don't work, then the third one must work. Mm -hmm. And it's about versatility, um, you know, uh, showing the fighters that things can work um, if, if they just listen and concentrate. You know, they, loads of things can happen. And that's trained some really good fighters. But as I, as I said, a um, bit of liberty taking, and uh, even up until couple of years ago I said to dad right I'm going to sit down with these fighters some of these fighters and I'm going to dictate which ones you train from which ones you don't train you know and uh and that's the way it's going to be now so that he gets the best out of it you know and uh, go from there yeah so how can we find the um Don Davies Boxing Academy how do we find you I want to come and visit where yeah. are you yeah we're, 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 we're at the Black Prince Trust which is a phenomenal trust um, they do basketball and uh, football there and it's in the heart of Kennington it's actually right about 10 minutes walk from David Hayes' gym 
Um, and, um, you know, we've got two rings, we've got untold space, we've got sprint track, um, we've got a, a multi gym inside of that as well, um, which the boys are, are, are using. And uh, I'm just watching this space because it's going to be a phenomenal year once everything opens up. Um, I'm also networking with the Dubai F Federation, um, the Indian Federation, the German Federation of Boxing, so that the amateur boxers, we can have our own pool of, of uh, international boxers, what we can work with, not when Good somebody networking. tells us to, what we can develop. Yeah, yeah, we're doing a lot of that, a lot of that. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting a few boys out there and them coming to us once we can. You want world champions, you need world experience. I keep saying it. That's right. You can't, you can't true, be a world talk. champion just Very fighting, true. you know, fighting everyone that you know. You've got to go out there. You've got to travel. So yeah. that's a really good thing about that's building up the network. How can we find you on social yeah, media yeah. as well? So um, it's Richard uh, Davis underscore boxing. Um, and I'm, I'm on the Facebook as well, uh, Richard Davis Facebook and uh, Instagram as well. So we've got quite a few social media things going on. Um, and we're just doing a Don Davis. He doesn't know that yet. A Don Davis Instagram page just for that. Um, yeah. And they can see all these bits and pieces on there. And the website will be finished in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we're just going to make it everything all happen. So, yeah for any like sponsorships or anything like that that people can get involved yeah. and yeah i mean uh we're always going to look for sponsors because that's that's uh the name of the game really we've got a few coming in um but you know i want to tap that caribbean community try and you know the this boxing thing is not just about boxing for us it's about well-being as i've said before uh, people talk about knife and gun crime, but they don't talk about the resources of it all and how it comes to how do, how do the, do the boys and girls do what they do, and without no one saying anything, no one sitting down with them. So now we've developed a counselling uh, team as well. So right. we've got a team of counsellors that are going to be with us. Um, they will begin in the next couple of weeks, um, and uh, because you need in sports. You need counsellors. You need to see what these these kids are doing, um, and so we've formed that. And um, yeah, we're going to make it happen this year. You know, we, we we've done quite a lot of work over the years um, with the mental health, um, special needs. I got I've got a contract with one of the NHS trusts for special needs, um, and all sorts. So we're just bringing the spirit of boxing for everybody, and and, and hoping that you know it will save them in for, for for whatever conditions or minds they're in so yeah oh that is absolutely fantastic that's brilliant stuff and and that's what you call paying it forward paying it forward to the community and putting things across yeah. to a, a vast number of people you're not just pigeonholing and saying you want certain types you're like no let's open this up you know counseling that that's yeah. not and something i I don't know. I haven't heard of a counselling service being linked to boxing, so that's something new for me. Um, so that's really positive yeah. as well. Like you said, special needs, you know, um, you know, yeah. reaching out for people that maybe need reasonable adjustments, but your, your door's open, and that's really positive. Doors are open. Doors are open. And there's one more thing I've done. I think I'm only the third or fourth in the country, I, I yeah. believe. Um, the boxer that trains uh, people with dementia as well so I've been on a few courses um, so I'm doing that also um, so yeah it's going to be uh, hopefully going to launch that in the next four to five weeks on a, on a Sunday morning Neurological. Um, okay. because I believe that yeah 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 it's, it's a good thing to do and we're you know there was the, for, for the older generation there is no community clubs anymore and stuff like that so right. this boxing thing will help to uh to 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 keep keep things going you know and words of wisdom from the older ones that can pass down to the younger ones because that's what they need as well mm. so yeah thank <laughs> you so much for taking the time to speak with me um you know i've really no enjoyed it no i've been educated yeah. by your father um you know and then yeah 
just to see you come on from that as well and continuing to pay it forward. Is there a little, yeah. I don't know, Don Davis the third that's going to carry it on from you and carry it on? And ca is, is this what we're doing? I don't think so. <laughs> My son, he, he ain't going to do no boxing. He's just about to do any football at the moment, but uh my sons i don't know uh but they're there they are there they they do come you to the gym know. to support which is good yeah and yeah you, you never know you never know so let's watch this space <laughs> yeah 100 yeah. listen yeah. I'm, I'm gonna come I'll, i'm gonna come down to the academy i'm gonna come and have a look yeah please do, do some filming yeah. see Lovely. what you guys are about and, and yeah put that up on the channel um let's get it out there the good stuff that you're doing the work in the community you know, like you said, building that legacy, paying it forward, future generations, yeah. helping these kids, helping the elderly, helping everyone, open doors, come yeah. on into the Don Davies open Boxing door. Academy. Thank Brilliant. you very and much. Thank you for hosting. Thank you very much. And, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll catch up. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> it's fantastic work we'll, you're doing. We'll catch up in five work, minutes honestly. on the WhatsApp. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, then. Listen, you have a great evening, and yeah, we will catch you. up on the WhatsApp. See what the see what the boys are saying. Then one more, yeah. uh, and we'll meet up again. Oh, we definitely day. will, Mr. Davis. Yeah. We definitely will. You you can sh you can show me some of your upper court. You show me some. All of right. Your yeah. Fight fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, hey, tell me if I've got a gift right. or a curse. Anyway, <laughs> listen, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, good. All right. Take October, care. Take it easy. Yeah. All right, see you in a bit. All right. October Red on YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And don't forget, at October Red, we stay ready.